it's Scott and today we're going to be taking a quick look at the iPhone app for the Zeppin Micro 2 slider which I have here right on the side of me. So if you want to see a full review or an updated review of this slider it's one of my favorite sliders I've ever used especially in this price range uh, and I highly highly recommend it. It's what I use for pretty much all of my b-roll shots on my videos for the past what three to six months probably. So if you've watched any videos on this channel and you see b-roll that looks like it was taken with a slider it's pretty much 99.9% .9 taken with this slider right here. Now today what we're going to do is just go really quickly into this app. I can't guarantee I'm going to cover absolutely everything that it has, but at least enough to hopefully get you up and going and kind of show you the ins and outs of how it works because it is fairly powerful, but it can be a little bit confusing if you don't have any kind of base knowledge of what it does and how it works. So first of all, let's just go in here and when you open up the app, it's just going to have your uh, devices listed here. So I only have one of course. You can uh, see that, just click on it and it will link. That's all there really is to it to connect to your slider. And now you can see they have this uh, slider, tilt, rotate, and follow focus kind of um, drag type interface here. Uh, so that shows, which is great, that they are going to be coming out with more modules, not only the single slider mo uh, motor for this, but also tilt, rotate, and follow focus, which is great. That's really going to add a lot of versatility to this. And when you can program all of that into here, it's just going to be really, really a great little kit to have. But anyway, for now, you've got the slider. It's the only one that's active. And you can see as I drag it to the left or to the right, it's going to actually move the slider. So this is a um, speed sensitive dial. So if you drag it just a little bit, it will move slowly. And if you drag it a lot, it'll move faster. This may seem like it's a little bit difficult to keep a consistent speed, but of course you can program A and B points into this. And actually, as you can see at the bottom, you can program up to five different points and adjust the speed between each of those individually. So you can get consistent speed very, very quickly and easily if you want. This is just gonna be a great way to kind of get it to those A and B points. So down below that you have the little uh, repeating arrow. This is for a looped type motion. So once it gets to one end, it'll come back and keep going back and forth. It won't just stop after one movement. So that's great if you're doing like interviews, for example, or if you're filming yourself. The play button in the middle will play your movement if you set uh, A and B points in there. Uh, right now we don't have any program. So let's go ahead and do that. All you have to do is just slide to whatever point you want as point A. Let's say let's set it there and then tap number one and slide over to where you want your second point to be and we'll tap number two and you can see there's that little yellow bar in there now and that means uh, that those two points are your, your course now and it's selected as number two right now which means that that's where the motion will start if you click play that's the point which will start from which right now it's at position two so if I click play it'll just start moving right there and since it's not in looped move, uh, movement mode right now it's stopped but now it's at position one so if I press play again going to jump back to position two because that's still selected and then it's going to start your movement at the desired speed. You can see here right above that section there's also now it says 4.5 seconds that'll tell you the duration of the movement between point A and point B at the uh, selected speed. So if you want you know you need a five second clip or you know you need a 10 second clip from this point to this point you can dial that in exactly how you need to get that specific duration which is really great. To adjust the speed, you can do things a couple of different ways. One is to grab the bar itself and just slide that up and down and it will adjust the speed. And you can see the time uh, increasing and decreasing also. So if I go really fast, that uh, A to B movement will take now 2.2 seconds. And as you go slower, it can take 10 seconds or you know even more, 20, 30, 40 seconds as you go really, really slow. So while the slider itself only has three speed steps on the slider motor itself, with this, you can get a lot more fine-tuned speed uh, specific just to exactly what you need. So now if I need three seconds of movement between point A and point B, as it moves back to point two, there we go, one, two, three, and there's my movement. So you can dial this in exactly how you need. What you can also do is actually grab the points, point at point one and at point two, for example, and if you have this kind of curve here, you could say it's not really a curve, it's a straight line, but it'll be slow as it gets to point one, but faster as it gets to point two. So let's select point one, so that way we start the motion at point one. We're gonna start it out really slow, and it's gonna get gradually faster as it moves towards point two. And now this speed selection will take 4.3 seconds. So let's just start it here. It's at point one now. We selected point one as my starting point, so press play. 
it might be hard to see on that camera but it does gradually speed up as you go towards point two so that's kind of cool and one way that i actually thought that could be really useful is if you want to get kind of a smoother stop at the end of a looped motion. So for example, uh, let me delete these. We're gonna long hold on the number to cancel one of these points. So we're gonna confirm that we cancel point number two. And now it's selected to point number one, so it moved back there. We're gonna also delete point one. And the one thing that I wish you could do is to reset these lines between uh, the speed here, because as of now, it doesn't seem like you can reset those. You kind of have to guesstimate it, and it might be a little bit tricky to get a perfectly straight lines. So I'd love to be able to just double, double tap that or in the same way long hold it and cancel out that kind of curve that slope that you've programmed in there just so you could get things back to a good perfect starting point but you can get it pretty close. So what we're going to do now I'm just going to make a short movement so you can kind of get the idea but obviously you would probably have a, a longer range of movement uh, if you were doing like an interview but we'll move this over to the other side here. Let's start it around there we'll set our first point and we're going to move to the center of where I want that motion. Let's say there, we'll set our second point, and then we're going to move to a little bit further and we'll set our third point. So from one to three is our complete range of motion here. And now what I'm going to do is just slightly slow down at the ends right there, just a little bit so that way it's not too noticeable, just like that for now. And now as I play this out, we're at point three now, so I'll start at point three. Let me actually sorry, loop this movement as well. It might be kind of hard to see, and you could adjust this obviously to a better speed for a longer motion for more subtle parallax type effect. The only last thing that we have here is a little uh, link button, and that's just going to bring you to your page where you can see the devices that you're connected to. and. Uh, you can see the battery life and you can actually rename it here. So if you wanted to uh, rename this, sorry, let me connect and click the rename thing here. Then let's go and say uh, Zeppelin 1. Confirm. And so then if you have multiple uh, devices, if you have two or three of these sliders, you can see right there exactly what you're connected to. So that's, that's nice. Next up, we have the time lapse page. Before anything else though, you can see that the little movement bar, my one, two, three, four points and my speed curve at the bottom are the same as I had it set just before. So you wanna set that in your video page because that's where you're able to move the slider uh, to the position that you need it to. You can of course move it physically and then mark your point as well. But let's go ahead and reset this real quick. So now going back into the time-lapse page, you can see first we have your exposure. So this is going to be according to uh, the settings in your camera. So make sure that you check the settings in your camera. And if you have, for example, let's say a uh, half second uh, shutter speed, let's do 0.5 here and you can confirm that and it's gonna set that to match your camera's settings. If your camera has exposure and noise reduction, you can also turn that on and uh, it will compensate for that time that it takes to do that. And then you can also uh, adjust your interval here. So they have some suggestions down below where you can see like if you're doing clouds, for example, a five second interval might be a good start if you're not sure what you want. But you would dial in your interval time here. And the only thing that I've noticed is that it doesn't seem like it can be less than one second. So we're gonna just dial in one second for now. And then you can see here the number of pieces. This is the number of pictures that it's going to take. And that will depend on the speed. So you can see as I adjust the speed, the amount of time that it's going to take uh, to reach from point one to point two is going to increase or decrease. So that will affect how many uh, pictures you can take with those exposure and interval time settings at that speed, if that makes sense. And at this point, uh, you would make this adjustment to determine the length of your final video. So uh, if you're gonna make the final video in let's say 24 frames per second, let's say 25 frames per second just for the ease of mathematics here. Um, if you adjusted your speed with these settings to 100 pieces, then that means that your final video would be 4 seconds because 25 frames per second. When you're in the time lapse page, pressing play will let you just preview your movement. And now I also have it on looped motion, so you can turn that off because for a time lapse you're probably not going to need that. Let's press stop and turn that off. And then when you want to actually start the time lapse, you're going to press the camera button. But I got to get my camera connected first just to show you how that works. 
Now I've got my camera plugged in and I've got a half second exposure time uh, dialed in. So we can just go ahead and hit the camera button and it's gonna move to our point two because that's what we have selected as the start point, which works the same as regular time lapse. And you can hear that it's now taking pictures at one second intervals and it's gonna be moving little by little. Just remember that even in time lapse mode, the red point is the one that you have selected as your starting point. So if you wanna start at point two and move to point one, then you're gonna to wanna to have that selected and vice versa. And again, you can adjust the speed, you can adjust the curve so it speeds up or slows down along that uh, movement. The only thing you really need to think about yourself is um, just how long you want your exposure to be. Uh, and now I have it set to half second. It's gonna again depend on your subject and also how long you want your final video to be according to how many frames per second that final time lapse is going to be edited into. So that's more or less what you've got in this app. Again, there may be some little details here and there that I have missed out on, but uh, for the most part, I hope that I can get you up and running with this app for either video or for time lapse. I'm sorry if I rambled a little bit, um, but if you have any questions or comments about anything specific in here that I may have missed or that I may have made a mistake about, please let me know down below and I will do my best to get back to you or to uh, find out that information so I can provide it to you uh, and also know for myself. But otherwise, if you liked this video or found it helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And do check out my reviews on the Zeppin Micro 2 because it's a great slider. And as always, thank you for watching.